to help you guys prepare for the uh, final exam coming up, I posted some uh, practice problems on uh, kind of the three big main math problems that we'll have uh, covered over the uh, over during the final. Um, that includes metabolic equations for uh, walking on the treadmill, uh, riding the cycle ergometer, and then uh, wind gate test. Uh, to be honest, the questions that I put up are actually pretty difficult, and I did this because um, I feel like if you can get through and work these and fully understand um, the math and the theory behind them, then you should have no problems uh, working through any problems on the exam. So we'll go ahead and get started. So in our first question, uh, dealing mainly with the treadmill, is calculate the estimated oxygen consumption for a subject walking on the treadmill with these parameters. A walking speed of 60 meters per minute, a body weight of 75 kilograms, and walking on a 10% grade. So the first thing that we need to do to solve this is, of course, get our metabolic equation written out. So estimated oxygen consumption is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times speed plus 1.8 times speed times grade. Run out of room there. Um, okay, so uh, if we look at, at our equation and what we've been given, we have everything that, are, that we need. Remember, speed should always be in uh, meters per minute, which we've been given at 60 meters per minute. And grade, we have the 10% grade, so remember we'll have to make that into a decimal when we plug it in. So if we plug that into our equation, VO2 is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times our speed, which is 60 meters per minute, plus 1.8 times our speed, which is 60 times our grade. Again, we need to make this into a decimal, 10% is 0 0.10. And then we'll just uh, work this out. So I like to work the parentheses first and then add them all together. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 60 is gonna give us six, plus 1.8 times 60 times 0 0.1 gives us 10.8 plus 3.5. So then we'll add those rows together, 3.5 plus 6, 3.5 plus 6 plus 2.8. Should give us an estimated VO2 of 20.03 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Okay. You'll notice I give you body weight, but we don't need that in this equation, uh, just extra ancillary data. Okay, so for the next question uh, is, a subject is walking on a track at a pace that elicits an oxygen consumption of 18 mils per kg per minute. What speed is the subject walking at? So again, if we look at the data that we're given here, uh, instead of uh, giving a speed and a grade, we've given you uh, the uh, oxygen consumption. So if we go ahead and then look further, if we look at walking on a track, this isn't some special magical track. If we say walking on a track, um, most of the tracks that I know are all flat. So therefore our grade is equal to 0% walking on a flat track. Okay, so if we then look at our equation and plug in our numbers, we'll use the same treadmill equation. However, this time for VO2, we have a number. So 18 is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times the speed plus 1.8 times the speed times the grade, which in this case is zero, right? So now if we uh, shrink this down, 18 is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times our variable of interest, which is speed plus 1.8 times speed times zero is gonna give us zero. Right. So now we can continue to solve the equation. Subtract 3.5 from each side. 18 minus 3.5 is equal to 
is equal to 0 0.1 times our speed. And then to finally solve that, we'll divide both sides by 0 0.1. is equal to 145 meters per minute. Right, if you're curious in what that is in miles per hour, we just divide 145 divided by 26.8 gives us 5.4 miles per hour. Okay, on to uh, the third, third sample problem. So a patient asks you for help to determine an exercise prescription. The subjects rec recently had their VO2 max tested and received a result of 32 mils per kg per minute. Since this person has not exercised in a while, their doctor suggests walking at 40% of their VO2 max. Calculate a treadmill protocol based on these two limitations to exercise. The first one that we're going to work on is the patient is elderly and cannot walk very fast and wants you to recommend a speed and a grade. Okay, so first we need to figure out, uh, similar to the last problem we just worked, where we're given the VO2 that we're trying to get and we're going to give a speed and a grade. So in this case, we need to figure out what 40%, so the first step is 40% of 32. So to solve this, we do 32 times 0 0.4 to get it into a decimal. So so the subject is going to be uh, working out 40% of the VO2 max is 12.8 mils per kg per minute. Okay, so uh, it mentions that they don't really like walking very fast. So what we need to do is pick um, just a slow speed and use this kind of based on uh, what we've experienced during the lab. So the first stage in, in the Bruce protocol is two and a half miles an hour. Uh, so we would probably want to walk slower than that. Uh, the stage that in general that we skip. Uh, so I would say anything less than two and a half miles an hour would be reasonable. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll say that the person is going to walk at two miles an hour. So to get what that is in meters per minute, we multiply two times 26.8, which gives us 53.6 meters per minute. So that seems like a reasonable speed, remember? So here we're just picking a speed and then, uh, then we'll pick the grade because speed is the important part. All right, so now let's plug this into our VO2 equation. Again, our estimated oxygen consumption, 12.8, is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times our speed, which is 53.6, which we kind of arbitrarily selected as a slow walking speed, plus 1.8 times our speed, times our grade. And our grade is ultimately what we're gonna solve. So let's work through these numbers. Uh, 0 0.1 times 53.6 is 5.36, plus eight times gives us 96.48 times the grade. Okay. So now we can add these two together. Is 8.86. Again, we'll subtract that from both sides. gives us 3.94 is equal to 
eight times our grade. And again, last step, divide both sides by 96.48. Gives us 0 0.04, or 4% 4 grade. So here our recommendation would be walk at two miles per hour at 4% grade. Okay, um, so the next step is, or the next problem is, uh, another patient feels very unstable at high incline ramp and is worried about walking on the treadmill. So in this case, what we would do is let's arbitrarily set the grade to very low. I'm gonna work it two ways. The first way I'm gonna do the simple way and just say, okay, then we won't walk at any grade whatsoever. So we'll put the grade is equal to 0%. And now let's solve for the speed that we need. Again, we'll use the same equation. 12.8 is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times speed plus 1.8 times speed times our grade, which is equal to zero. So that goes away. So now we have 12.8 is equal to 3.5 plus 0 0.1 times speed. Okay. The reason that goes away is we multiplied by zero, which means it is equal to zero. Okay. Continue to solve the equation. Subtract 3.5 from both sides. So it's equal to 9.3 is equal to 0 0.1 times speed. Divide both sides by 0 0.1. Then our speed is equal to 93. So 93 meters per minute, or we can divide that by 26.8 to convert it, and then the speed then is 3.4 miles per hour. So we would tell our subject to walk at 3.4 miles per hour at a 0% grade. Grab a second sheet of paper. So we can also do that if maybe 3.4 miles per hour, um, that's a pretty um, a pretty brisk walk. And if you guys will remember from class that um, 3.4 miles per hour coincides to that awkward phase. And so you may not want a, a subject to uh, walk in, be, uh, be doing exercise during that awkward phase. So let's do the same thing, except for this time, let's make our grade a 1% grade to just increase it uh, just a little bit. All right, sorry, let's make this, uh, we'll go a 4% grade. So that'll be something that's not very steep, but we'll add something. Remember in the Bruce protocol, we're gonna be um, starting at like 12, which is the 4%, uh, not really too much. So our equation again, same, we're given our 40% of our VO2 max is 12.8, 0 0.1 times speed, plus 1.8 times speed, times our grade, which we know in the decimal is 0 0.04, And then plus 3.5. Um, okay, so we'll continue to work this out. 12.8 times is equal to 1 times speed plus we can multiply this out. So 1.8 times 0 0.04 uh, gives us 0 0.072 times speed plus 3.5. Subtract both sides. Divide 
9.3 is equal to 0 0.1 times speed plus 0 0.072 times speed. Okay, so now we have essentially our x variable, or variable of interest in two spots. Since it's an addition, all we do is combine those. So therefore, our equation now becomes, so we'll add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.072 gives us 0 0.172 times speed. We'll divide both sides by 0 0.172. gives us a speed is equal to 54 meters per minute. To get that into miles per hour, again, we'll divide by 26.8. Gives us a speed of two miles per hour. So this is essentially the same answer we got from before, just working from the exact opposite way and showing you how to work that. So again, two miles per hour, 4% grade which is much more reasonable and not in, a, in an awkward stage. Okay. Now we can get out of the treadmill and get into our cycle ergometer. So the first question, calculate the estimated oxygen consumption for a 90 kilogram uh, subject uh, on a cycle ergometer with a power output of 115 watts. So, um, let's start by writing our metabolic equation here. Our metabolic equation um, is simply VO2 is equal to 7.0 plus <coughs> 1.8 times work rate divided by body weight. Okay, so our work rate, if you'll remember though, has to be in kilogram meters per minute. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. 115 watts times six. We'll convert that easily into kilogram meters per minute. So that gives us 690 kilogram meters per minute. Tiny writing. Um, and so now we have everything that we need to solve this equation. So 7 plus 1.8 times our work rate, which is 690, divided by our body weight, which is given to us in kilograms here. So now we just solve that. Which is equal to 20.08. So now let's calculate the total amount of work. If you'll remember our equation, so power is equal to work divided by time. Right? Therefore, work is equal to power times time. Right? So to solve that, all we do is multiply both sides by time. Work is equal to power multiplied by time. So to solve our work, <coughs> we have work is equal to 690 kilogram meters per minute. And they worked out for 20 minutes. 690 times 20 gives us 13,800 kilogram meters. And then to calculate the total caloric expenditure, all we do, since it's total, it's talking about how many calories do we expend over the entire 20 minutes. Therefore, we use our work. So our work is 13,800 times 0 0.0023 is our conversion factor. Gives us a total caloric expenditure of 31.74 kilocalories. 
if we had asked for average caloric expenditure, what we would have used would be the power output, uh, which is the 690 kilogram meters per minute, um, and that would have given us average calories uh, per minute. Okay, last but not least, for the cycle ergometer, uh, which has an estimated high, a higher estimated oxygen consumption. Uh, so again, we'll just plug these values in. Uh, so we have a 65 kilogram female, 75 RPMs with two kilograms of resistance. Uh, so for this, in order to get the power output, we just need to put it into our formula, which is power is equal to RPM times six times resistance. Right. Okay, so we'll plug that in real fast. So power is equal to 75 times 6 times 2. Is 900 kilogram meters per minute. Okay, now we can just simply plug that into our equation. VO2 is equal to 7.0 plus 1.8 times our work rate divided by our body weight, given 65 kilograms. And now we'll work that out, 1.8 times 900, divided by 65, this is 24.9, two plus seven. Gives us an estimated of 31.9. And then we will do the same for the male. So our power output in this case, RPM 60 times six times three. Is a power output equal to 1080. So then we'll plug that into our handy dandy equation. 7.0 plus 1.8 times 10. 80 divided by body weight of 85 kilograms. Again, we'll just plug that in simply. 1.8 times 10, 80 divided by 85, 22.8 plus 7. Ultimately gives us 29.87 mils per kg per minute. So therefore, in this case, the female um, is um, has a higher oxygen consumption than the male in this example. Okay, and last but not least is working through our Wingate calculations. Um, there's another video on this early on that you can go back and look through. Again, this is just extra practice and uh, actually is probably a little bit harder. Um, so uh, let's go through and figure out. A subject who weighs 80 kilograms completed the same Wingate protocol that we did in our exercise physiology class. His peak RPM on the cycle was 163. His average over the 30 seconds was 83 RPMs, and his minimum was 58. Calculate the following. So, as you can see, what I've given you here is part of our equation, right? So we'll remember our power output is equal to resistance times 6 times RPM. So, uh, what we're going to need to solve for then, for peak power using his fastest RPMs, what resistance are we going to use? So this has to go back into your memory banks a little bit or go back into how the protocol is done. If you'll remember, the wind gate is um, equal to, uh, when the resistance drops, resistance is equal to 7.5% of body weight. 
Okay, so let's figure out what his resistance is. His resistance is 80 kilograms times 7.5% or 0 0.075. So 80 times 0 0.075 gives us 6 kilograms. So now we have um, the values that we need for our formula. So for peak power, power then is equal to resistance, which is 6 times 6 times our RPM. His peak RPM on the cycle was 163. So we multiply that out. 6 times 6 times 163 gives us 5868 kilogram meters per minute. To get that in watts, we divide by 6. Gives us 978 watts. Okay. His relative peak power, if you'll remember the formula for this, is just peak power, the number we got, 978 watts, divided by body weight, which is equal to 978, divided by 80 kilograms. equal to 12.225 watts per kilogram. All right, so the average or mean power output, again, we'll use the same equation here. Power resistance will stay the same, times our six, times our RPM. This time we'll go up and our average RPM over the 30 seconds was 83. So that's the number we'll plug in here, 83. 6 times 6 times 83 gives us 2988 kilogram meters per minute. To get that into watts, gives us 498 watts. Our relative mean power in watts per kilogram, again, same as before, we take our watts. Average watts divided by body weight, which is equal to 498 divided by 80. Then gives us 6.225 watts per kg. Anaerobic capacity, you'll remember this is just equal to total work over the entire um, 30 second protocol. In order to do this, we'll take our average power um, output and then calculate total work from that. So here we have our, our average power. We got it 2988 kilogram meters per minute. So And again, we can go back to our trusty power equals work divided by time or work then equals power times time. So our power, 2988, and our time is half a minute or 30 seconds. So 2988 times 5 gives us an anaerobic capacity equal to 1494 kilogram meters. All right, and finally, our anaerobic fatigue index is essentially the percent change from max to min. So, to calculate this, what we'll do is we will take the absolute value of change from max to min divided by our max again. So <clears throat> first we need to calculate our minimum power input. Um, power input is equal to six kilograms times six um, times our minimum was 58 RPMs. Equals 2088 
Remember, we'll do this in, um, we can do this either way. We can do it in kilogram meters per minute or in watts. It should give us the exact same. So let's plug in our numbers, 5868, which was the peak power output, minus 2088, divided by our max, which was 5868, and then we'll multiply by 100 to get it into a percent. 5868 minus 2088. 3780 divided by 5868. This gives us 0.64. We'll multiply by 100 to get that into a percentage. So 64.42 if we round it to two decimal places. Okay, um, hopefully that sums it up. If you need more work on the Wingate calcs, again, there's a, another video um, from earlier in the semester that, that I um, walked you through um, that has some different data that you can watch again. Uh, this one just takes from a little bit of a different angle by giving you only RPMs. And if you're struggling through the metabolic equations or had any trouble following anything in this video, uh, please let me know and I will do my best to help you out. Uh, good luck studying and again, uh, let me know if there's anything I can help you with uh, through email or stopping by uh, in my office hours.